thank you so much for your time. It's really a privilege to have you. And uh, maybe for those people who may not know you, of course they know you, but uh, who are you? Like, what do you do? Where you, like, where were you born? Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for having me. Um, so my name is Charlene Chela Gatruto. I never assumed to say my name because I've met many Kenyans who, <laughs> they know me by face, but not by name. I am so passionate about the young people of this country, of our continent, of the nations, and um, it's something that really burns within me, a desire to support the young people and to be there for them and to be a voice for them with this space that I have and this space I've been able to be a part of. And so I can say I'm a champion for the young people, I'm also a very serious beekeeper and I say beekeeping will make me a billionaire. That's what I want to make it do. And as well, I'm a very proud African, very proud Kenyan. So I was born in Nairobi, raised in Nairobi. All right. And uh, if you see me going to different parts of the country or going to my home county of Wasingishu, it's because this is something I've been brought up to do. We always used to go home for shags for Easter, for Christmas, as is, the, is with the case with many of young Kenyans. But now it's what developed my passion in agriculture. All right. Yeah. So did you also go to school in, uh, in, in town? I went to Kilimani Junior Academy and I was um, sharing with someone the story of how I was a joker in primary school and I didn't used to take my studies very seriously. So my parents, I think they saw if this girl, if we don't help her, uh, she might not pass her exam. So I moved to a boarding school and to Gilgil Hills um, Academy after that. And I did well enough and went to my girls Eldoret and eventually to Desta University. There's this story, people keep asking whether you really were doing some business in school, whether you're doing smoky, sm smocha, I don't know whether they were there then. Uh, is, is that story true? You know, when I shared the story of how I was selling smoky kachumbari, it really, what really um, I realized is, you know, for us politicians' kids, I mean, there's so much um, expectation or thought or misconceptions of who we are, but imagine we're just people. We want to make our own way in life. We want to have our own successes. And so when I was in Desta University and I was doing that business, it was for my own sake. It was for me to learn something and get something for myself. Ah. And I think through the little experience I have, because I'm 30 years old now, I've learned the sweetest money is the one you make for yourself. It's not the one you're given as pocket money. It's not the one someone gifts you, but that which you make for yourself. And that's the money you're actually most responsible with. Because when somebody gives you money, you know, maybe you are not expecting it, so you'd spend it on your leisure activities. But when it's money you've made, then you're very keen to spend it on things that are responsible. Yeah. yeah. But the, about the business, uh, I'm struggling with coming up with a business idea. Maybe for those young people who are trying to, be, to, to start something, some business, what's the trick? How do you start? Wow, there's, there's so much someone can do business-wise. I think it depends on what you're exposed to. Um, like I shared with you earlier, I'm from an agricultural background, so I've been exposed to agriculture. So then my business area has come around that. So I think it depends on what you're exposed to, what you're interested in, because you could be exposed to something, but you're not interested in it. I've been exposed to so many different business avenues, but I picked agriculture and specifically beekeeping because that's what took my interest. So exposure, interest, mentorship is also very important because even as I run my business, I always consult with my father, I consult with my mother, they're they are my biggest mentors. I consult with my older siblings. I consult with a few other mentors that I have in my life. So also mentorship is important and being in touch with the current trends. I think there's a time um, Kenyans tried to do the quail business and it didn't go well, it failed. it failed. So you have to be very keen on what's the current trend, but then not hopping onto a trend but knowing how you can um, use it long term. Something that I have to ask, uh, you're passionate about three things, Mambo ni Matatu, the things you like doing, uh, about supporting the girl child, about education and about uh, conserving the environment. Uh, why, why did you choose that path? Yeah, so um, earlier this year, I reached out to the young people and asked them how can we work together? Because I believe in working together, not working alone. And that's how um, the 30 things were formed and I'm still finalizing on the strategy, it should be out in a few weeks. 
but there are three main areas that I want to look at and that is youth in action. So this is talking about the young people and how we can be empowered, how, ca how we can be mentored, how can we move away from just having regular white job, white collar jobs to actually getting into entrepreneurship. Um, so those are the different, the digital skills and the digital economy, the gig economy, how can we get into that? That's the first theme. And then youth and the society. Um, as young people, society really affects us and this, this is looking at even our young people because I go around uh, the country, I visit different schools, different counties and we still have so many challenges. We can't say we've achieved that much of youth empowerment. We still have challenges with our young women in terms of menstrual health and hygiene, in terms of sexual education, in terms of teenage pregnancies and even with our young men we still have a lot, even in terms of mental health, alcohol, and, alcohol drug and substance abuse. And the third thematic area is climate action and agriculture and looking how we can grow trees. I think um, it's, more, it's more beneficial and effective when I go and we visit the young people in different schools and we, grow the, we plant the trees together and we leave them to grow the trees and we teach them the importance of doing that. And as well as agriculture and getting into agribusiness and looking at agriculture not just as um, something that people used to do in the past or you know people were farmers in the past but looking at agripreneurship and looking at the whole agricultural value chain I say there are so many opportunities for young people for example I don't know um, content creators in agriculture who are below 35 there are none and I'm imagining if there's a young person who could visit my farm take you know, record what I'm doing and share the information. Visit another beekeeper in Kitui, visit another beekeeper in Lamu, visit other people who are doing different things in farming. They would have such rich information for anybody who wants to get into agriculture. So there's still so much that can be done. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe because I've seen some beehives around, uh, maybe if you could take, take, take us through what you do during your day, what time you wake up, uh, do you go straight to the farm? How, do, how, how does your day look like from morning? Um, when I come to the farm and when it comes to beekeeping, beekeeping needs to be done very early in the morning or late in the evening. So when we want to go and check the bees, we start off at around 5.30 because it takes a while to prep and get ready depending on how many people are getting into the beehives. So we have to wear the right attire, we have to do safety checks because we don't want anyone having a breach. We, want, we need to do a brief of what exactly are we going to do so that we don't go there and waste time. So are we going to do regular hive checks? Are we going to harvest honey? Are we going to just uh, you know, slash, slash around and make sure the environment is good for the bees? So once that is agreed, then we go into the beehives and depending on the number of beehives within a bee house or within an apiary, so an apiary is a site for bees, then it usually take maybe one or two hours. So from about six to eight, by about 8.39, the sun is already up really up the bees are already getting very active and we don't want to interrupt the rest of the activities so um, whenever we do beekeeping that's how we start and we do the same process if we are doing it in the evening probably in a different space and an important thing we do is we make sure we keep record of how many hives are occupied how many are not what how have we found those hives are there pests there is there honey did we manage to harvest honey because if we harvested honey from this hive today we know that probably in another month or two is when we'll find honey again so we are able to avoid interfering too much with the bees and but we still provide for them a good environment i think i was at the bell ringer at some point when i was in primary school <laughs> and um, when i was in my girls i was the chapel prefect um, in Daystar, I was part of the events committee at some point. When I was in college, in university, I didn't take up on too much uh, leadership roles. I was doing too much more of reading. Smoky and smoky. <laughs> and, and doing that business, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah, so those are the, I can say those are the leadership roles that I've had. Do you have future ambitions? What do you like to do in the future? I have already taken it up in a different capacity. I mean, capacity. I mean, serving the young people is the greatest privilege and honor that I could have and just creating spaces for them. I, I totally love it. And that's something I would wish to do for a long time. All right. Mm. And uh, uh, maybe perhaps uh, just to, to be clear, uh, did you have any talents in school? What did you like doing? Well, what do you think my talents are, Emmanuel? You've, think, you've been think, observing me. I think you'd sing well. <laughs> you think I can sing? Yeah. Well? I was in the school choir in high school, ah. so I can sing to some extent. Ah. I don't think I'm that badly off. Uh -huh. Maybe, maybe I love dancing. 
Ah, you can. Ah, I love dancing. I love we'll dancing. We'll see that. We'll see that in a few. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. Right. All right. So, uh, as we wrap it up, uh, perhaps uh, some advice uh, for the young people like yourself out there. Maybe what would you like to tell them? Uh, just growing mm -hmm. up. Um. So, my advice to the young people is, we need to have each other's backs. We need to support each other. I'm, I'm saying I'm creating avenues for the young people and maybe they're wondering they've not seen these avenues and I can say there's a lot happening behind the scenes. I'm getting partners ready, I'm getting people in play and I think um, I have a website, shalindito.com. If the young people could follow me, could sign up so that when these opportunities come, because I'm not able to meet physically meet every young person in this country or in Africa, when these opportunities come, we're able to share them digitally. I think as young people, we have ah. that power. We have the power of um, mm. the digital space and we know how to use it beneficially and effectively. Not to use it to troll each other or, you know, to speak badly about each other, but to support each other. And I do love that I'm able to support many young people in the initiatives that they are doing. There's some who reach out to me, even they, they message me or they call me or they reach out to my team. I have a question for you, Emmanuel. How do you think the young people of this country can be supported? I think they can be mentored, mm -hmm. they could be given some opportunities if they're there and just guided mm -hmm. through what they're doing and uh, just giving them uh, hope mm -hmm. that there's still a future, just like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It starts from there. Mm -hmm. A journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Mm -hmm. So the step you're taking should be the steps that the other people should take. Thank you, I'm as, so grateful. As, as I Thank you. All right. That has been Charlene Ruto, as she says. She has been, she is a champion of the youth and she's trying to reach out to as many people as possible to try and bring them together to champion and lead the cause towards uh, just improving on what we already have as the youth and continuing to, of course, help the youth uh, be better from where they are. Until next time, uh, my name is Emmanuel Tor and we are here in uh, Narok County uh, for this edition of uh, this show. Please uh, stay tuned for the next episode coming up next week. Thank you so much.